Detroit, Michigan, birthplace of a dream. A dream that would change the world. Detroit, Michigan, birthplace of the Ford Motor Company, cradle of the American road. Right in this shop, Henry Ford hopefully built his first car, dreaming of an entire nation on wheels, free to move, free to grow. What would he need to make his dream come true? The Rouge, world-renowned giant of manufacturing, created by Henry Ford in pursuit of his dream. The Rouge, awe-inspiring symbol of American industrial might, builder of millions of Ford automobiles for the American road. Its great blast furnaces, each seven stories high, smelt over 3,000 tons of iron a day, annually devouring five million tons of ore. Daily, the Rouge manufactures 4,000 tons of coke and immediately consumes it in the iron smelting process. Giant open hearth furnaces refine 4,000 tons of steel every 24 hours, a never-ending effort to keep the tremendous presses and hungry machines supplied with the raw material for bodies, frames, transmissions, parts. An average of 40,000 Ford men and women work at the Rouge, transforming the very materials of the earth into shining cars and trucks for Americans and for the world. Industrial Colossus? Yes. Unique? Indeed. There is no other plant like it in the world. Yet giant though it is, the fabulous Rouge is but a small part of the industrial might that today provides meaning and vitality to Ford's automotive leadership. The new Ford office buildings symbolize a sweeping expansion and modernization of the entire Ford structure begun in 1946. One of the most important phases of this rebuilding program was the creation of the largest single design development and test facility in the industry, Ford's new research and engineering center. This is Hurricane Road, the latest to be completed of 19 specialized facilities at the new Ford Center. On the outside, just another building. But inside, Ford engineers can subject working automobiles to every weather and road condition to be encountered anywhere in the world. Sit in this car for a minute, and you'll have an experience you may never have in an ordinary lifetime. You are inside Hurricane Road. Up ahead, past these turning vanes, sits a 2,000 horsepower monster, a 24-foot air propeller. The operator gives you a last inspection and closes the circuit. Now you're sitting in the middle of a hurricane. A 125 mile an hour wind is roaring past you, with gusts up to 140 miles an hour smashing into the grill, sucking at the hood latches, doors, windows, trunk, searching for weakness. Want some rain? Here's a monsoon. How about Death Valley? Suddenly, it's 120 degrees outside your car. But it isn't really like Death Valley. There's no sun. Sorry, there is sun. A real Death Valley sun pouring a blistering sun load on every exposed surface of the car. Wonder how the car would operate under such conditions? Well, let's find out. Somebody turned a dial somewhere, because now it's 20 degrees below zero in here. Hurricane Road is the only test facility of its kind in the automotive industry. It took imagination and a great deal of money to create it, but it will mean even better quality Ford cars and trucks in the years to come. Throughout Ford's research and engineering center, other men are working toward the same objective some reaching far into the future. In advanced laboratories, 
nationally known scientists are exploring the innermost secrets of the very structure of matter, searching for completely new classes of metallic and non-metallic materials that could lead to stronger and longer lasting automotive parts, new chemical combinations that could lead to new lubricants, adhesives, finishes, compounds. With the aid of high-speed electronic computers, research men are analyzing new alloys, new automotive devices, new suspension systems, new propulsion systems, some completely different from those of today. Could this be a Ford of the future? A car riding on a cushion of air? A far-fetched dream car? Who knows? Every automotive advance, great and small, starts as a dream from the very beginning. Over in the styling center, still other specialists are dreaming ahead and planning Ford's place in the future, translating possible engineering advances of tomorrow into designs of beauty. The dreams of advanced stylists today will help Ford decide what to produce in 1965, 1970, 1980, just as their dreams of yesterday have helped to shape the immediate future. Months and months ago, this car too was merely a dream. Slowly, painstakingly, it came into being. Interiors were proposed. Dimensions were carefully adjusted to the human form. Style was translated into engineering blueprints and then into steel as the first cars of the new line, the prototypes, were built entirely by hand. Looks nice, doesn't it? And every component in the car has been subjected to the most exhaustive individual testing program it is possible to devise. Now, slam it around the track. Test the car as a complete unit under every possible driving condition. Pour it on. Beat it up. Drive it a lifetime in a matter of days. Torture this car until it's fully proved itself worthy to bear the name Ford. Today, Ford, the company that started the American road, presents a new era in American motoring. A new era on the American road ahead. A wonderful new world of 1960 Fords. For budget-minded customers, the beautiful Fairlane, base of the great Ford line for 1960. Two-door sedan, four-door sedan, or two-door business sedan. But most people will insist on stepping up to the Fairlane 500, new value leader of the industry, available either as two-door or four-door sedan. Not many prospects will resist the great extra value at small extra cost, represented by the 500's added smartness, greater luxury. Unless, of course, they want even more. And here it is, the glamorous galaxy, with a distinctively different roof line styled after the Thunderbird. This four-door town Victoria shares its beautiful roof line with the four-door town sedan and the two-door club sedan to complete the Galaxy line. And for those of your customers who want proved performance, this year, the bright, high-spirited Ford Sunliner, full of pep, full of fun, a high-performance car from the word go, is joined by the unique Ford Starliner, a special two-door hardtop with a racy roof line to match its get up and get. Two brilliant performers to sparkle the eyes of the young and the young in heart. And of course, there are always those who want a wagon. And Ford, wagon boss for 31 years, offers for 1960 the most beautiful wagons ever made. Two and four door ranch wagons, the luxurious country squire, and six and nine passenger country sedans. And for the ultimate in personal transportation, the 1960 Thunderbird. The 1960 Thunderbird offers new refinements from front to rear. Completely new interior trim schemes, including optional all leather seats, mark the 1960 Thunderbirds as very special automobiles, 
with a very special new feature, the optional sunroof for the Thunderbird hardtop buyer, providing all the safety and security of a steel top, plus open air ventilation and sun. A distinctive air deflector assures a quiet, gentle flow of air through the sunroof, even at highest speeds. But for real lovers of the open air, here's the best news of all. A completely automatic convertible top. The lady doesn't have to leave her seat. Just a touch of the lever, and in seconds the top is up or down automatically, requiring only the securing or releasing of the two windshield header clamps. The 1960 Thunderbirds, most wanted cars in America. And now, joining these magnificent automobiles in 1960, the new size car all America has been waiting for, the Ford Falcon. The Ford Falcon, a car conceived, styled, and engineered to outperform and outvalue all competition in the economy car class. Here is the newest of the world's most beautifully proportioned cars, created in the classic tradition of Ford fine car styling. Here is quality and attention to detail you normally expect in the most luxurious of Fords. Yet the low price of the Falcon makes it easier than ever to be a two Ford family. The Falcon is a big, roomy car inside. Although it's two and three quarters feet shorter than the regular Ford, it seats six people easily with big car hip room, leg room, shoulder room, and then some. The luggage compartment is a big 23 cubic feet with a spare. The Falcon delivers up to 30 miles a gallon and on regular gas. No six-cylinder, six-passenger car ever got so much out of regular fuel. A real economy champ. The Falcon is the world's most experienced new car. As a climax to three years of intensive laboratory and track testing, a number of Falcons were driven over every single mile of every known federal highway in the country. The nimble, responsive Falcon has been designed with ample reserve power for any kind of driving city or country, with safety, comfort, and economy. The Ford Falcon, newest of the new in the wonderful new world of 1964.